Hello and welcome to my tiny office. As you'll see here, it is truly tiny. I've been recording out of box rooms and offices and living rooms for around about seven, eight years. Some of the earliest videos on this channel is me in front of a suspended screen of just a, a fake brick wall. I've used green screens. That was a living room. In the last year and a half, two years, I was lucky enough to be using a spare bedroom and putting these shelves behind me into a set. And right now I'm pretty much in a box room, which is big enough to put a cot and a, a wardrobe in. And yes, that means that I will be forced out of here, but into a new office very soon. An experience that I plan on sharing with you. So if you want to see how I build out that new office in the next few weeks, few months, hit subscribe. But there's a lot of equipment that I've collected over the last three, five years that help me make my YouTube videos. So today, as part of me packing up my office, I'm going to show you every piece of equipment I've got knocking around that I've used to make my videos on YouTube over the last eight years and on this channel for the last four. Now, obviously there'll be a few things that I'm going to be using whilst doing this. So I'll list those up front. One, this wonderful chair, an Umi chair, which you can see as part of this video here. It is a gaming chair that was sent to me and it is really, really comfortable. Ever since I moved into this studio, this has been the thing that I've been sat on. Whilst previously it was footstools or I was standing up. This here, the thing that you might not be able to see properly is a lavalier mic. It's a Boya BY-M1 and it's a cardinoid microphone. In other words, it's a little microphone that you stick here. That way I can move around wherever I want, even behind the camera, and the audio would be focused here. Rather than a shotgun mic, like the one on top of my Canon 200D. The Canon 200D is my first and only DSLR. It was bought for me as a Christmas present by my girlfriend around about two and a bit years ago. And that was a huge investment for me because I really suck at buying stuff for myself. And the video mic Go is a shotgun mic, which means it points it straight at you and it can anything that's in front of it really, whatever it's pointing at. It's very good at pointing things, but not very good if you're talking behind it or you're trying to get the spatial awareness. And if I move away from the camera using a shotgun mic, it, it loses the audio quality because if I'm halfway down a canal or halfway down a, a pavement, I'm nowhere near the microphone. Whilst this Boya BY M1, not only does it have a stupidly long microphone cable, but it's attached to me. The camera is on a Polaroid 60 inch tripod and tripods have saved my life because in my early videos you can go back and you can see where I piled it all up on tables and footstools and every time I even stepped forward the camera would wobble but those are the basics that I'm using right now. The camera, the microphone, the microphone, the tripod, oh and of course a ring light which is right here. My ring light doesn't dial in it just turns on and turns off, but you can get ones that you can dial up in brightness, even have color scheme, even have sleeves. All of the equipment that I mentioned today, by the way, is in the description down below, should you wanna go off and investigate. Now I'm gonna start tearing apart the set behind me and packing it away so I can move it into the new office that I'm hoping to get signed and sealed within this week. But this way I get stuff packed and you get to see what I actually use. Starting off with the super simple stuff. This is a USB and this is attached to me. This is a microphone. Once again, another lapel microphone. Now the Boya BY M1 can connect to the camera, right? And it has a, a headphone jack but it's not very good if I'm sat there trying to record screen records or trying to do voice chats or trying to do consultations using a laptop. So this plugs into the USB, this plugs here, and then I can do a lot of work there. This is probably something that you've seen countless billion times by many people, a Logitech C920, maybe even a C920C. Um, these initially, went for like 50, 60 quid, but during this pandemic thing, people have been scalping them at 150, 120. When I first started YouTube, I didn't have a DSLR camera. I just used a webcam and then tried to clump together some decent audio. So you can start on your mobile phone or you can start on a webcam. Webcams are very good for live streams as well. An obvious piece of equipment that everybody has 
is their mobile phone. This is an iPhone SE 2020 edition. I've had an iPhone SE for uh, four or five years. I had the original ones. I just prefer the way the screen works and the, and the button works. Yeah, that is my missus on my lock screen. This thing, as with any smartphone, can give you some of the great fantastic audio. It can help you take video clips on the go. You can record in 4K. You don't even need a DSLR if you're starting today. You can just use a smartphone to get started. Content online is better than no content at all. Perfection of continuing to tweak is your enemy. So this is a Boya BYDM 200. I got this for Christmas just gone. Why? Because I needed slightly better audio on my lightning port based smartphone. So this plugs in to the lightning port on my iPhone and it's a little microphone, a little, sh a little shotgun mic. So what I do is I, I plug it in here, right? And if I'm making podcasts or if I'm recording a video, here you go, little microphone there. It's just a little bit better than your on built onboard audio. There's no battery in it. Boya, I find is quite a, a good, cheap alternative to like the Rode or the Sennheiser. A Rode microphone could be a, a few hundred if you're going top end, but you get a Boya equivalent, then they're easily half the price. All the Boya equipment comes in nice little bags for you to carry. It's even got one of those like dead cat things. So you kind of just like whoop and take it wherever you want. I'm keeping this out along with obviously my phone and maybe like a mini tripod to go and have a look at the office later. I'll show you. Here you go. This is an example of the microphone. I've done a comparison on these, by the way, in another video. I'll put it somewhere in the iCard. I did a comparison between the Boya BY MM1, which is the cardinoid shotgun microphone, and the Video Mic Go, which is the Rode thing on top of this camera. Once again, plugs into your camera, gives you directional quality audio, and it's always good to have a few options knocking about. This is much cheaper than the Video Mic Go. It just so happens that I've got a couple knocking about just in case. And as you can see here, I've kept the box for the Video Mic Go. Why? Because it looks good on the set behind me. Wireless headphones. Now I've got a few sets. I've got a, a big set of, of cans that I edit with that cost me 20, 30 quid. They're M Pals. I'll show you some footage here if I can find them. But these little beauties, but these little beauties are little in here, like wireless um, wireless headphones from Anchor. They're the Soundcore something something Soundcore Surge Buds. Why are these important? Well, in some cases, I just want to listen to music whilst editing, or I want to keep myself to myself. And what these do is these can sync to your phone, these can sync to your laptop, right? I don't know if you can just ah ah. Oh. They come in a nice little springy thing, a load of headphone wires and stuff like that. Great for keeping on me. I take them when I go on walks, when I'm walking down the canal, hopefully when I get on flights in the year 2027 20, billion. I would be lost without a good pair of headphones because over the years, I used to have the headphone jack ones and you'd lose one sound in one ear, sound in the other, right? Or you'd, you'd they'd get tangled in something. This. They're either clipped to me always here when I go out or they're in my pocket, love them. Laptop cooling pad, right? This goes under the beast of a machine, right? That I edit with. So this plugs into the laptop and cools it down when needed because this is the beast that's on top of it. It's the Dell XPS 15, the 2019 edition. It's basically a PC equivalent of a Mac. It cost me two and a half, three thousand, two and a half grand. So that's about uh, three and a half thousand dollars. But at this, I only bought this because the business was doing well. Before that, I edited on a, a really bad laptop that cost me 200 pounds that I slowly upgraded with an SSD and slowly added RAM to. This was a business investment. Some people buy cameras. I was editing videos for other creators, right? So. This paid for itself, but every time I made a video for somebody else and uploaded it for them, and it, that made me 75, 50, uh, 75 to 100 pound maybe a video. So this paid for itself, and now this edits all of my content on here, and I won't switch this out for easily another year, year and a half, two years. Why two years? Because 
if you truly use your laptop for work, you realize how quickly you go through a laptop rather than just a casual user. Now, I will list the spec of this, right, in the description down below, but safe to say you're looking at a, an i9 4K screen, it's got a large SSD, and I think it's got 32 gigs of RAM. So it's, it's, it's a brute force machine. And the reason I got this is because the old laptop would render a 10 minute video in about 15, 20 minutes, half hour, this does it in two minutes and saves me a lot of time. And when you're in YouTube and social media, it's the time that you need to keep winning back. Because I can make a little bit more money with my half hour, an hour on the laptop if it's available, right? When it's rendering in two minutes rather than rendering two videos in 30 minutes. I hope you understand what I mean by that. Okay, here's my bag of random wires. Now this, this is a box that I also store all my stuff in. I absolutely love these. I would swear by these, right? They go in my, my shelving unit here, which is like by home base or by Ikea. It's one of those Calax square units, but you have to organize them, right? So I've got, I've got these, they've got handles. I've got them black. I've got them in blue. I want to do, uh, and they're all just below here. So I can hide all of my terrible mess, but I also store my wires and my cables and my other electrical equipment in here and my, my tonic tea cakes that I've eaten. This is another wired lavalier microphone, but this one plugs into the headphone jack of my computer. Now, I got this because I had at the time a laptop that had a dedicated headphone and dedicated microphone slot. So I wanted to use a jack-based system. I also, to be honest, wanted to test cheap alternatives the, for the, the camera thing, but you, you very quickly learn that not all headphone jacks were made equal. It depends on how many bands they've got, whether it's a digital thing, whether it can be used with a smartphone, that kind of thing. And th this is by Toner. They also do little microphones as well. You'll see a trend over time. I'm a firm believer in the Anker brand. The Anker headphones, I've got an Anker sound bar, a mini sound bar. This is an Anker power block, which does around about 10 iPhone charges, right? And it's fantastic. It takes a while to charge, right? But once charged, you've got your USBs, you've got your lightning, your USB-C, right? And this can, keep your laptop going. This kept my phone going whilst my other half was giving birth to my son in a hospital and I had to be around for 10, 11, 12 hours trying to keep myself entertained whilst she was trying to stab me because she was in pain. But this power block can I, I can take anywhere. I'll be taking on airplanes, I'll be taking to hotels when the world opens up and Having one of these knocking around your house is actually more useful than you realize because your mobile phone battery dies fairly often. I always have a load of USB cables, including, and here's a sneak hint, an old iPhone charger, because I've recently added to my setup an old iPad. Why old? Because it was free and it doesn't matter. Why an iPad? Well, if I want to do screen recordings for i-based content, maybe, maybe I, I show you how to add in screens or edit videos on an iPad, then there you go. I don't have to use an emulator online. I can use one of these. And once again, this I believe was donated to the family for the five-year-old by my father-in-law. So yeah, here we go. So we can now place apps on here. It's also very good at making notes, keeping ideas on and keeping you entertained when you're out and about. Maybe having a script if you're recording in a, in a park or something. It's also a great way to entertain a five-year-old should you need to you know, set up a camera and record something very quickly. Mini light. You ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blind you. This is a fantastic way of giving you additional pieces of light. Now, when I went to VidCon 2020, at the start of last year, before the world went to crap, I was trying to record a load of video footage in my hotel room, in which I was using the orange lights from the ceiling, and if I was lucky, maybe the, the torch from my phone. This was my solution that I've thought of ever since. It's a little light that I can, that's all LED, you can see all the little bulbs there, right? That I can put wherever I want and shine to give a little bit of light in places, right? I can bounce it off a wall like I'm doing there. See the difference when I turn it off, right? 
I can make it my main light, I can attach it to my camera if I so want to, or in dark areas I can illuminate. You can also get color covers. Should you want to put red, blue, green behind you, you'll be seeing that in some of my videos in future. When I go into the new office, I'm going to set up a, an area that says this, an area that is, is light based. But this is the alternative to the ring light. The ring light might cost you 20, 30, 50 quid or more. This is the cheaper alternative and a hell of a lot more mobile. I can put that in my pocket without any problems. HD video capture card. Now, I'll be honest, I've not used this yet. I, I blame Rob Wilson for this idea existing. He hooks up his DSLR camera to his laptop using one of these. Now, this is not like an Elegato kind of capture card. It could be used as a low res capture card. He says opening it, right? But what it is is a HDMI to USB kind of connector, okay? So I can connect this to my computer and then plug my camera via HDMI into here and then it converts it, maybe even turn it into a, a webcam that I can live stream with or use it directly into the laptop. It comes with a cable and an extender so I can, I can extend it as far as I wish. And it says that it records in 1080p, 60 frames per second, plug and play, no, to, no need to install and it's a high speed flash thingy. Basically, I saw Rob Wilson from vidIQ use it and I thought, well, if he's using it and I'm part of the vidIQ team, maybe I should get to know what it does as well. And most importantly, it was only like five bucks. Old phone charger, like, you know, micro USB, always great for charging things, always good to have these knocking around rather than plug it into another thing that charges off your laptop. Spare lightning cables, you can never have too many. Another Boya. This is what was in, inside the Boya BY MM1 box just to show you that it's extra fluffy, it's got the connector at the bottom, and this one comes with a mini tripod and a little spring, so I can attach it to like a, a phone or clamp it onto a, a camera. This is a homemade storage device. Basically, I had an old laptop and I ripped out the old SATA hard drive. It's a terabyte drive in here, right? And then what you can do is you buy a case that you plug it into, and then it turns it into a USB driven external hard drive. This way I can save and back up everything that I want and because it is USB-C, rather quick. And it's fairly cheap because it's not an SSD. Now you can get an SSD equivalent and put it in there, it's even faster as well. And some people suggest that if you edit on an external hard drive SSD using USB and USB-C, it could be faster on slower, older laptops. Tripod, I easily have about five, six tripods knocking about. This is one of those like cheap equivalents of a Gorillapod where you can manipulate it and wrap it around things. It's good for cameras, it's good for phones, it's good for stands, I can mount my lights on it. You can never have too many of these and because it is quite small, I can put it in a backpack, I can walk into town, I can set up a shot and it stabilizes something rather than me trying to wedge it up against a tree or not just generally not getting that shot at all because I don't have something to, to hold it up on. However, one of my biggest secrets and easily one of the best tools I ever got is a freebie from our people at vidIQ. Right? We were giving these out at the vidIQ stand at VidCon. What is it? Right? It is a mini tripod that I can keep in any pocket that I can mount my phone to. Right? Any time that you've seen me sit there and quickly swizz around, I'm using this. Right? I can move it around wherever I want. It's got legs. Right? I can even detach it. Should I once again want to put a camera on it or anything that is mountable? And this was free. And this just goes to show that you don't have to pay anything to get equipment that you're going to use on a regular basis. And I use this easily four or five times a month when recording content. If I'm out and about, if I'm walking on the canal, if I'm just generally filming content that I've planned to make out and about. It will be with this, unless I go with slightly, slightly high production. When I was vlogging in my VidCon like vlogs, I was using this. In my earlier videos, I used to show you how what equipment I used, and I used giant softbox lighting. These are the bulbs that are inside that light. These are 5500K light bulbs. That's the color, the brightness, how 
different they happen to be. In human terms, that means that if I turn this on, it looks daylight white, rather than if I turn a light on in the living room, it's kind of tuned to be a little bit more orange. This one's small and this one's big. In all honesty, there's no difference between the two, just I could find them slightly cheaper on eBay. Be warned that daylight bright light bulbs could set you back anywhere between five and eight pounds or 10 bucks per bulb because there is a very specific need and they're not mass produced. But I use two light soft boxes on tripods, normally one here, one here, and a ring light in front of me. But in this little office, I don't do that. I don't need to because there's not much light to be pulled away from me. I'm really close to the camera. That's me pretty much touching the lens and I'm not, I'm not playing around. So all I need to do is the ring light to flood here. But when I go into the new office, I'm going to use multiple light sources to, to light me up. I'm even gonna use ring lighty stuff behind me, you know, color things like that. But I just wanted to point out that you don't have to have a massive setup. This is me stealing a corner in a tiny little room. And what I used to do is steal a, a corner in my living room, setting up the stuff and setting down the stuff. This is my general day-to-day -day equipment. Obviously, there'll be, for example, spare batteries and SD cards for the camera, all of which I'll list down below, but this is everything I film with. And here it is, one of the rooms in the new office that hopefully you'll get to see me kit out over time. Now it's been a long journey getting to this point where I can finally have the business afford an office. And I'm going to tell you that story next week, how I went from being pretty much bankrupt to be able to have the business afford a place for me to record in. So subscribe to see that story. It'll be here if it's made already and there'll also be a little tour once I kit this wonderful new cottage out.